Hey guys, my name is Tim Compton. I'm the artistic director here at Goggleworks. Um, today I'm going to be hanging out in the ceramic studio. We've got a great project for you um, using clay. Um, it's actually going to be making a ceramic mug using flat pieces of clay. So they're called slabs. So we're going to slab build a mug. I've got a little template here that's going to make life real easy. Uh, and I'll show you a couple other tools and tricks that should make um, everything run real smooth for you. So prepare yourselves to get a little bit muddy, um, but it's going to be a great project. Okay, um, I've started cutting out some of the pieces for my mug here. Um, you can see I've got, the circle is actually going to be the base. It's got kind of a clever built-in uh, ability here. By cutting out that slit, I can actually overlap those pieces and start to make more of a cone-shaped base as opposed to just a flat base. Um, and that's what we tried to do with this template, was build in options for you so that you can make the mug that perfectly suits your needs. Um, I know some people are coffee drinkers, some people are tea drinkers, some people are hot chocolate drinkers. Um, and each mug has maybe uh, some different unique uh, attributes that you might want to build in. Now the skinnier and the wider pieces depend on the number of lines that I leave and if I'm wanting to maybe make a slightly skinnier mug there um, or maybe I want a really nice wide hot chocolate mug right there. Um, it's important for me to keep in mind that the size of my mug needs to fit on my base. So we try to make that base nice um, so that it could go with some of the wider mugs. So I'm going to work on laying this out and then I'm also going to cut out my handles. I think I'm actually going to use this handle here and I'm going to put together a taped up version um, so that you can sort of see what it's called a maquette uh, or a practice piece um, that um, will tell me how it's going to look when I actually go to make it out of clay. Alright, so you can see here I've used a couple pieces of tape um, to put together some of these pieces and you can start to play around with um, sort of the design of your cup. You could go with sort of a fun cup that maybe has a handle that hangs out over here. Um, it's important to keep in mind if you put an angle on your cup that water will stay flat so um, if you have too much of an angle the water may you may only be able to fill your cup um, halfway so play around with the design a little bit when you feel pretty good about it you're ready to start getting muddy i'm going to pull this apart and use it to lay out some different pieces on my clay all right i've set aside my um, template pieces and now I'm ready to start working with clay. Here's a couple of tips for you. First of all, don't work on a perfectly smooth surface. You can see here that this is uh, a fairly unfinished board. Uh, this is just a piece of wood. You could also work on even, even concrete if you needed to. Um, but one thing to avoid is like slick countertops. Clay is a little bit sticky um, and on a slick countertop it's really going to stick. So um, I recommend something like um, a board if you've got one laying around um, to work on because it tends to, to come off a little bit easier. Now I have three different parts to my cup so I'm going to sort of eyeball them out and try to make sure I set aside enough clay for each one. So if I've got my body template of my mug there, um, that's probably going to be my biggest piece. My base for my mug is going to be my second biggest piece and then my handle is going to be my smallest piece. That's going to help me sort of make sure that I have a, the most clay available. Now, I mentioned in the very beginning that uh, flat pieces of clay are called slabs. Um, we've got a number of different ways that people roll out slabs in our studio, uh, and I'm going to try and give you a couple of tips for working uh, with flat pieces of clay at home. First things first, take your clay and squish it between your fingers, trying to get it as flat as possible. No matter how you're starting with a slab, you need to mash it to be flat first. Now, in our studio we have these great big rolling pins uh, and they're really fantastic for kind of rolling out clay. Anytime you're rolling out clay it's important to take a second to unstick it from the table before you keep rolling on it again. Um, if you've ever made cookies you've realized that the first couple rolls the, the cookie dough really spreads out um, but after that it starts to stick and not move. If you don't have a giant rolling pin laying around your house for, um, for this type of thing there's a couple other things that you can use. We've got these tubes here 
Um, these are just cardboard tubes used for construction or something. Those will work certainly to do it. But I wanted to show you a no tool option for making a slab. So again, sort of squish it out, get it kind of close to where you want. And it's important to keep in mind that you're shooting for a shape that's roughly what your pattern is. So um, I don't need to make this any taller, I just need to make it a lot wider so that I can cut out my cup. Now, the top secret trick for making flat pieces of clay is that you can throw down a piece of clay so that the base part hits first and then as the rest of it lands it'll have momentum and it'll actually stretch. I mentioned earlier that clay is a little bit sticky. This is where you can use that stick to your advantage. So by holding it in my hand and sort of throwing it down so that one part hits first, do that two or three times, you can start to see that clay is all of a sudden much wider than it was before. Now, it doesn't always look like the most finesse thing, but once you get it going, it really will start to spread. And at this point, I am almost spot on for the size of my piece. So I can do that, set that piece aside, and now I need to work on a circle for my other piece. Now again, I'm gonna squish it between my hands, thinking about the fact that I want this to be a circle. And pretty quickly, I can get it almost to that size. Beat it on the table a little bit, and we're getting really close. So I'm gonna throw this guy down a little bit. And a couple of throws. And this takes some practice, so um, don't expect to throw it down and get it perfect on the first piece. I'm right there. Now you'll notice that this looks a little bit like Pac-Man. I actually cut out the triangle that I'm going to close together to help pop up the middle of this. So um, in disassembling, I took it to the next step. Now, I don't really need to worry too much about the handle right now because I'm going to finish that later. But safe to say that it starts off the same way. The key that I do with a handle is I kind of roll it between my hands. And that starts to make it into a sausage shape. And the closer I can get it to a sausage shape, uh, the better it's going to be when I go to actually make my handle. I'm going to set that one aside for now, um, and we'll get some pieces cut out. Now once you've got your pieces flat and rolled out, um, now would be the time to do any decoration that you would want. It seems like it might be a little bit too soon, but in reality it's much easier to apply decoration when these pieces are flat um, than when they're round. So sometimes I'll use this tool, this is called a wooden rib, um, and smooth over my piece. If I've got a lot of bumps in it, that can be really helpful. And I'm, anytime I'm trying to smooth clay, um, I'm going to use different directions. It's going to make sure I hit those high spots from different directions and really start to iron them out. So it's starting to look a little bit flatter, a little bit smoother. It had some bumps from being rolled out. I'm going to set these little crumbs aside. Um, if I wanted to, I could actually take something like a piece of fabric or something that had a nice texture, or some students will roll it on tree bark, um, has a really fun texture, and collect textures. Um, that's a really fun thing to do if you've got just a spare piece of clay laying around. Um, you can go out into nature and roll it on leaves and tree bark or bricks and um, really pull up some textures. If I just pat this onto here, you can see it starts to leave a really fun texture on my clay. And even some things you might not expect um, or things from your childhood maybe. We've got some cookie cutters. Um, I can kind of pat that down on there and pop that off and leave sort of an imprint. One of the things I like to do if I'm using really recognizable cookie cutters is try to overlap them or present them in a slightly different angle so that people have to really think as to what, what it was that I was using to make that pattern. It can be a really fun game. There we go. Now you'll see that I'm doing most of my texture on my slab that's going to be the body of my cup and that's because that's going to be the part that's standing up. If I did it on the base of my cup, um, it might be something that would be fun that I would know was there, but it would be highly unlikely that the people using the cup would see it right away. So um, for the, sort of the most bang for your buck, I recommend putting a texture um, on the side of your piece. So I've got the texture on there, I'm going to lay down my template here. 
and it just barely fits. This is called a needle tool, so named because it's got a needle for a tool. You could also use my personal favorite, um, a plastic knife, um, just out of your takeout food container. And I'm gonna loosely cut around this. I don't have to be exactly perfect. I said before, clay is a little bit squishy. It's gonna help you mend any issues later on. But I do wanna try and follow my template here. Get that arc just so. And I'm pulling away the scrap clay that I'm cutting off. And quickly you'll see all of a sudden I have a piece of clay that is the same shape as my template. Now that left me a pretty good chunk of clay. This can be used for decoration later. Uh, maybe if I want a bigger handle, uh, I can do that. So now that I've got the body of my mug set aside and you'll see it's sticking just a little bit. The wetter my wood gets, the more my clay wants to stick to it. So if you've got a big enough piece of wood, you can kind of rotate around and make sure that it's not sticking. Now for my base, I'm just going to go around and cut that out. And here I'm using that plastic knife again just because I really like that as a tool. Um, but the needle tool cuts a little bit more precisely and kind of go around. And you get that Pac-Man piece. So now that I've got those pieces cut out, I'm ready to start actually assembling my mug. So this is probably one of the most important parts of working with clay. It's really the make or break process um, that will decide whether your piece is going to fall apart uh, at the end of the day or whether it's going to hold together. And when joining two pieces of clay, I could take those pieces of clay and smash them together. But no matter how well I push those together and really push that seam together, the clay is not really melding all that well. And if I start to pull this apart, you can see it splits right apart. That's where the clay is gonna crack. So, the key to a successful joint with clay is called scoring and slipping. And scoring is making lots of little cuts. Now I can't tell you how many times I have students that are nervous about this part because they've worked so hard to get their piece to this point and then I tell them to score and they're barely scratching the surface. That's not going to do anything with clay. What you really want is you want some cuts in that clay to really open it up. Then I'm going to take, you can kind of see there, I've got some pretty aggressive scratches. Then I can either take a sponge or my finger and I'm going to add some water to it. I'm going to add water into all those cuts. Then I'm going to go back with my needle tool again. And I'm going to score it again. If you're working with kids at home, a really great tool for this is a plastic fork. Uh, or even a dinner fork. Um, it's, those tines work really well for scoring and slipping. So, now I've got all kinds of muddiness and scratches in there. The way that I try to explain scoring and slipping to people is it's like, slip is like glue and scoring is like turning the clay into Velcro. If you Velcro and glue something together, it's not coming apart. And that's the case with scoring and slipping. If you do a really good job of scoring and slipping your piece, when you go to stick it together, you should see some, some wet clay kind of ooze out. The ooze is a very good thing and you get an area where that clay is not coming apart at all. Now, that's very soft and mushy. Um, I can take my finger and kind of smooth over it a little bit, but if I really want to get this cleaned up nicely and looking pretty, believe it or not, the next step is to actually set it aside. You need to let that clay sort of let the water spread out into the clay um, and let it stiffen up that space a little bit more. Otherwise, you're just going to keep mushing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to score and slip the body of my mug. So now I have scored and slipped the base of my piece. Now I need to do 
the upper part of my cup. And the first thing that you'll notice is if you try to stand it up, it leans out and it wants to fall over. So what I tell students to do is to actually work on that cup upside down and it makes more of a cone shape. Now, as I go to bring this around, um, you'll notice that I don't want to just fold it in half. If I fold it in half, clay will find the weak spot and that will want to crack. So I want to be really gentle and kind of curve that piece around. And what it'll do is it'll make kind of a cone for me, a really nice cone shape. Then I can start with my scoring and slipping. And I've started a little bit on this edge here, but I'm going to scratch really, really well. And remember, you don't want to just be gentle and make small little scratch lines. You actually want to kind of get pretty rough with that and really scratch it up. You can use your finger or a sponge to add a little bit of water to it. Scratch it up a little bit more and we should be ready to bring those two together. So now I can take my fingers on either side of that, let them kind of marry together and I want to see that ooze come out of there. The ooze is a good thing. That tells me that that seam is not going to come apart. I can kind of work over it a little bit, but just like the base, I'm not going to be able to get that perfectly smooth right now. I do need to let it set up a little bit. And I got my workstation a little bit wet here, so it's kind of sticky. And once that's put together, I can actually flip it over pretty easily and start to see the shape of my cup. Okay. One of the things I like to do at this stage, because the clay is soft and squishy, is take the time to pay a little bit of attention to the rim. This is the part that's going to go inside your mouth when you drink out of a cup. And I can't tell you how many students have left this edge only to find that it becomes razor sharp after the firing process. So take the time to kind of pinch around and get that rim looking really, really nice. Nice and rounded, maybe flared out just a little bit. Get yourself a nice looking rim. You can pay a little bit of attention to the outside area there. You can see I've started to get a little bit of cracking. It's nothing too terrible, nothing I'm going to lose any sleep over. Those are just some thinner spots from putting my design in. And what I can do is I can actually lessen that cracking by pushing that part in a little bit and moving around and kind of bumping out some of the other areas. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to set it aside and let it dry up a little. Okay, so I've let these set up a little bit. Um, I've gone ahead and scored and slipped along the bottom. Uh, remember this is upside down, so that's gonna become the bottom of my cup. That's what's gonna attach to the base. Um, you'll see that my base is a little bit more rigid. Um, it's, this is called, this is a stage called leather hard, uh, and it's really the stiffness of leather. Um, leather hard is one of the best phases of clay as it starts to dry out because it can still be mushed and, and shaped a little bit. Um, I'm kind of squeezing around the edge here um, to get it nice and rounded, but you can also start to use some of the different tools on it. So I can really scrape over that edge and start to make that seam where I joined my, my two openings of my Pac-Man piece, I can scrape over it and make it basically disappear. Now you'll notice that I'm scraping as opposed to uh, a lot of people will use a sponge and water um, to try and smooth out clay. And what happens with sponge and water is you actually end up wiping away some of the smaller parts, um, whereas a hard rib, you can see it can almost get it kind of shiny. It really brings those parts to the surface. So that's the way to get it the smoothest. Now, I have got this lined up. I am going to try and line up the seam of my base with the seam of my cup. And that's really going to be the area where I actually put my handle. So my handle is going to hide my seam. Um, so to do that, I'm going to kind of set this one on top, get an idea for where I want that to sit, kind of wiggle it just a little bit. And then when I pull it off, it'll show me exactly where I need to score and slip. So I'm going to score this. Now, I made this area really goopy, so it's got probably enough slip for both sides, but I'm going to do a little bit more because remember, that is the key to a good 
connection in ceramics is that scoring and slipping stage. So I scored that, add a little bit of water, and when I score it again, it's gonna make plenty of slip there for me. And that'll give me the ooze to know that I have a connection that's not gonna crack later. Perfect. So now I can take that and I'm gonna set it right on top, try and line up my spots. Now, if I flip this over right now and really just kind of beat on it, um, that's gonna cause this, this cone shape to kind of flatten. So what I need to do is kind of work my way around until I see that ooze popping out, which I do. You can kind of see I'm working right around there and pushing it to join. You can see I kind of offset from my base a little bit there. I don't think it's gonna to lean too much, so I won't have any dribbles, but it could be kind of a fun design for my mug. So I've worked that all the way around. I know I've got plenty of ooze coming out, and you can see as I go to set it over, I got kind of an interesting looking mug, plenty of landing space there uh, for my handle. So I'm gonna let this set for just a little bit more. We'll come back and add the handle. All right, so I've let this set up a little bit more. Um, you can see there's a little bit of texture on the inside. I'm gonna use my end of my plastic knife, smooth that out a little bit. I'm working very gently. I'm not squeezing this cup at all. I'm just letting the clay kind of stick to my hands. This is really where that attention to detail makes for a really nice mug. If I leave a lot of bits down in the bottom of that mug, it'll be scratchy and hard to clean. So I'm gonna take the time to kind of clean that up. Again, I'm gonna go back and pay even more attention to that rim, make sure that that rim is nice and useful. If there's a waviness to my rim, you can see I've got kind of a chunk here. I can pinch it and then tap on top of it to kind of get it to even out. That's going to be where my handle's at anyway, so that'll kind of hide that. Work my way around. Make sure that this stays nice and smooth. Kind of play around with the shape a little bit. This is looking real good. All right, I'm ready for a handle. <laughs> so, if you remember when I was rolling out shapes, I said you want to start with kind of a sausage shape for your handle. Um, you can roll it on the table, you can roll it between your hands to get it close. I'm going to do a bow tie handle, but honestly what I usually do is roll it out to kind of get it close, and then I throw it down on the table and just tap it with my heel of my hand. And that gets me really close to the shape I need. So let's take a look here. Yeah, I'll be able to get a bow tie shape out of that. So I'm just going to cut this. Now, if you remember me talking about the rim of my cup and how important it was to make sure it was nice and smooth because that rim was going to go in my mouth, same thing goes with your handle. That's the part that your hand's going to wrap around. If I leave sharp edges, these sharp edges on my handle, um, it doesn't really matter how nice of a shape I get on my handle. If those are sharp edges now, they become razor blades after the firing. So real quickly, just kind of running my fingers over those, you see how quickly they smooth out. I can flip it over, do the same thing on this side. Not a lot of pressure, just letting my fingers kind of glide over top of that. Change direction, and pretty soon you got a nice smooth edged handle. Now, if you remember when I curved my piece for my mug, I said I don't want to just bend it because the clay will find the weakest spot. So I'm going to do the same thing with my handle. I'm going to kind of wiggle it, wiggle, 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 and it'll start to smooth, smoothly move. Now I'll show you what happens if you don't do that wiggle there. I've got a, a rolled out piece, tap it flat with my hand, and I'm going to show you what happens if you just bend it. I start to get all these little cracks in there, and if I bend it too far, they get really big cracks. Um, and those will become bigger cracks as it dries, and then possibly break. So the key to getting a handle that doesn't break is to kind of wiggle it. 
I even have a little crack that's starting to try and show up here anyway. So um, that definitely would have broken if I'd have just bent it. So now I'm going to figure out exactly where I want that handle to go. And I am going to score and slip my cup. And I'm going to bring it all the way down right into the base where my cup meets my base. That becomes sort of a natural transition point anyway. And then I want a fairly big handle. Um, one of the things I try to encourage students to do is to think about how they hold a coffee mug before they make a coffee mug. So um, think about how you hold it. Do you use one finger in your coffee mug handle or four fingers? Um, believe it or not, my wife and I actually hold coffee mugs very differently. Um, so everybody sort of has their technique. Uh, and then there's always that person that doesn't use the, the handle at all. Um, they just sort of dive in and, and grab it like any other cup. Um, so think about how you drink out of a coffee mug when you're making one. Now, you'll see how I'm kind of holding on to this, and that's really to not stress that curve that I just made. You could always score and slip this before um, you bend it so that you don't run the risk of it cracking. And honestly, if it cracks, make another one. So. I did not slip this, and that's because um, I scored and slipped really well on my mug, um, and I think I can kind of get plenty of ooze out of just my mug without having to do it. So I'm going to kind of squish it in there, look for that ooze, I'm seeing it, so that's a good sign. I'm going to squish this down here. And this is where it gets kind of tricky, you got to figure out how to get your hands in there. This part takes practice, kind of using my finger. but supporting it on the inside as well. Now, handle shape is really key. If I left this out and I hold my mug like this, my hand is so far away from that, that liquid that it's going to want to really twerk my hand down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the shape of my handle. Hopefully it doesn't crack on me here. If it cracks like this, it usually means your clay is a little bit dry. You can kind of work some water into it, maybe swap for a different piece of clay. I think this is going to hold for me, but it's not, not playing too nice. I do want to take a second to kind of look down the handle of my piece and make sure that my handle is fairly straight. Just like that. And you end up with a pretty fancy looking mug. Now, I have these two chunks of clay. I could certainly add all kinds of decorations. Keep in mind, if you're adding you know, little decorations and things to your handle, that first of all, each piece adds weight, and second of all, that you always want to score and slip uh, that piece. So if I wanted to add you know, a little thumb rest there on my handle, I could add that, but I would need to make sure that I score and slip my piece, score and slip my handle, and then add it on there. What I would recommend doing before adding any decoration is giving it a chance so that the whole cup can get kind of leather hard. That might be overnight in a bag or um, might just be an hour sitting out on the counter. So um, depends on how things are going in your house. So that is the basics on a cup. The next step is to let it fully dry once it's all finished and decorated. Um, you don't want to let it fully dry if you're still working on it. That will make it so that pieces won't attach or it'll crack or break um, and that's no good. Um, once the clay is fully dry, it's at its most brittle stage. Um, and so you want to be extremely careful with it. I tell students when treat your totally dry clay um, as if it were eggs. Um, you don't want to drop your eggs, you don't want to stress your eggs too much otherwise they'll, they'll crack and clay is very much the same way. You want to be very very careful. Um, you're going to put it back in the box in the kit that it came in. You're going to bring that box back to Goggleworks and we're going to put it through um, the first of actually two firings. Uh, the first one is called bisque firing um, and bisque fired pieces look a little bit different. This is a piece of bisqueware. You can see it's a lighter color. It also has a bit of a ring to it. Um, so that's what bisqueware looks like. 
and then from there we'll dunk it in a glaze of your choosing uh, we'll have five glazes for you to choose from on a little card that'll come back with your kit as well um, we'll get it dunked into a, a glaze for you and then it'll be ready for pickup so that is the steps on how to make uh, a slab built mug i hope you have a lot of fun with it do take the time after you're done to clean up um, your space water does clean up night or water cleans up clay just fine um, but it will leave a dusty residue so you usually need, need to go back with some soap and water uh, to clean that off um, I think that covers it, and um, I'm really excited to see the pro projects that you guys come out with. Um, please do hashtag us on social media uh, and share your projects as they come along. We're really excited to see them, and we hope to see you in the studio again soon.